Oh, hello. Welcome to the 2013 Hundy Challenge. Today we're going to be discussing Horatio at the Bridge by Gene Wilder. You know, I mentioned at the end of the last video that I had been warned against reading this. Not against reading it. I had been warned that it was terrible, that it was bad. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't, you know, mind-blowing, life-changing or anything like that. Um, you know, I guess maybe as a result of, here's this fucking ambulance going by again. I hope nobody's hurt. I don't know what to tell you. We don't live on a main drag or anything. There shouldn't be ambulances going by like this. All right. <laughs> a little real world uh, cutting in here. Um, I may be biased because I'm doing this all in a row. So maybe not absorbing, you know, everything that Faulkner had to say at the rate that he wanted to say it and that sort of thing. But I really like when a book is easy to read. I don't care if it's 900 pages, you know. If it's an easy read, it's an easy read. Sometimes you have Tender as the Night, which is a 150-page book that was an impossible read, you know. And sometimes you have Invisible Man that was an easy read, you know. And it was longer. <clears throat> this was a very short book, very easy read. Um, I'm, I gather there's a lot more going on under the surface than, you know, you catch. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of intriguing, it's not really a simple story, um, but it's kind of an interesting, what we would today call high concept piece. So, I initially thought this was about a World War II battle. Uh, anybody know what I was thinking of? Like, I don't know. Oh, Bridge on the River Kwai. That's probably, I mixed the two up. Or the Guns of Navarone. Anyway, it's not about World War II at all. Um, it takes place in colonial Peru. In the beginning of the 18th century, here goes the cops now, just to go take care of that person that got hurt, I guess. Um, okay, so this is a time period and a place about which I know, I'm willing to say I know nothing about colonial Peru. So Thornton Wilder could have told me they had a magical ant queen, and I might have believed him. I gather it's entirely fictional. I, I looked it up to see whether it was sort of based in fact, and I, I don't think it is. Anyway, I keep getting distracted. I'm already two minutes into this. I haven't even gotten into the story yet. Um, but a lot of that is not my fault. Somebody got hurt. You know, you should have some respect. Um, so the bridge of the San Luis Rey is an old Indian rope bridge that has stood since time immemorial, and uh, they expected it to stand forever. They didn't really think about it. You know, It had stood for so long that they didn't really think about it. So it collapses one day, it kills a bunch of people. Everybody declares that it's an act of God. Now, since it seems to everyone that it was an act of God, because the bridge had stood forever and theoretically should have stood forever, this uh, monk, I guess he's a Franciscan monk, comes along and says, ah, here's a chance to test God. We know when the bridge collapsed that it was an act of God. So, you know, what does it tell us about the people that died? What does it tell us about the people that survived? And, and so on and so forth. So then they have that opening piece that explains that. And then they go into the lives of three of the victims of the bridge collapse. Um, and they were each kind of intriguing. Uh, nothing really like edge of your seat intriguing but kind of interesting partly because of you know the unusual time period and location and they all were you know a little interesting the first one was about this um mother that's kind of obsessed with her daughter who wants nothing to do with her um so the only thing she can think of to do the mother is to write letters to her daughter and try to excel and get her attention that way and uh, just kind of accidentally stumbles into being the greatest literary genius of colonial Peru, um, read by children forever after there, just because all she wanted was for her daughter to have a kind word for her. Um, the second story is about a pair of twins who develop a twin argot, and uh, 
so they nobody can tell them apart and uh, being as nobody can tell them apart this famous actress who falls in love with them as a concept she just picks one and says hey what's your name uh, you're gonna come and be my uh, scribe and you know he falls in love that kind of thing and uh, splits the twins and it didn't matter which one it was it could have been the other one because um, nobody could tell them apart and when the twin who fell in love with the actress died the other one just kind of didn't know what to do with his life um, and the third story was about the actress again and it was about her I guess you'd call it manager or agent it was just this really weird kind of jerk off of a guy who just always told her she was terrible and uh, you know was constantly trying to get her to improve until she went crazy and decided to leave the theater and then he tried to get in good with her again so um, you know I get it each of these stories says you know did this person deserve to die? Were they a good person? Were they a bad person? You know, does the act of God that destroyed them have anything? To, is there a God? You know, is there actually divine will and providence? Or was it just an accident? I, I should look this up. Each of the, 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 the bookend chapters, the first one was called, maybe it was an accident. Perhaps an accident. The last one was perhaps an intention. So, you know, was the bridge collapse an accident or was it intentional on the part of God? Because it's considered an act of God. Um, so the last bookend chapter, this, uh, this biographer, the monk, is burned at the stake as a heretic, along with all of his work on the bridge uh, collapse and interviewing those people. Um, which I guess that's supposed to be the ultimate irony there, um, you know. That in, I guess, in trying to divine the will of God, you know, he violates it. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily an atheistic piece. I don't know that it's necessarily a theistic piece. I think it just kind of poses the question and lets the reader come to an answer on his or her own, which is, uh, you know, rare and valuable. Um, so it was interesting. I would give it my tacit... Uh, recommendation if you've got nothing better to do and it reads in like a day uh, it's like 250 pages but it's like that um, so thanks for tuning in uh, sorry about all the ruckus outside that was fun that was almost like having a whole different thing going on in this video um, next time we will be talking about Tobacco Road by Erskine Caldwell thanks for tuning in